Hello Burberry Troop, welcome back, I'm the real Andy of Burberry Hills and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About This Mess Girl. I mean, I am on a new chapter in life, okay? Yesterday was my birthday. Thank you very much. I read every single one of you of your birthday messages. And um, it really, like, you know, during this time, it, I was talking to my husband the other day. And um, it was very weird going into your birthday with, you know, everything that I'm going through with my channel and this new podcast and, you know, all the things that are going out, right? And it really, like, opened my eyes even more to the fact that, you know, everything happened for a reason, you know? And I was kind of, like, weirdly enough, kind of, like, grateful to, uh, like, see that everything that I have been going through is, like, going on this um, new journey, you know? So instead of, like, being sad and keep, like, like, you know being upset about the demonetization of my of my YouTube channel, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still fighting, I'm fighting till the end, okay, because it's definitely not fair, but it was like, what if we just, like, take a different approach, you know, put, I, I'm, I'm putting all my energy, you know, to you guys, to the Patreon, to this podcast, to do something different, and maybe it was a chance to also evolve, and maybe when the time is right, and YouTube, uh, come back again because I know YouTube will be activated again at some point, you know. Um, <clears throat> I feel that the bad guys never win, right? So eventually I know it will get uh, monetized again. And maybe when that time comes, I'm going to be able to bring all this new knowledge and all these new things that we have been doing here to the YouTube channel, you know. I'm also really enjoying the closeness and you know the intimate intimate you know um things that we're discussing over here so even if the youtube channel comes back at some point i'm still gonna keep my patreon and it definitely is a lesson of you know keeping things separate you know i think i'm gonna definitely be using my patreon to People who are really involved on the Bravo community, people who are really part of the Verily troop, you know, um, maybe here is going to be when I, where I'm just going to be dropping their really good exclusive tea, you know, and stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, I will cross that bridge when I get there. But in the meantime, I'm just like learning and just taking like this, you know, um, moment you know to be really grateful and yeah I, I i just kind of like went into this birthday completely different you know i was like i'm not gonna be upset i'm not gonna let this ruin my birthday or you know my life anymore you know and it has been an amazing year um i got so many messages so many dms from you guys on all of my social media and that kind of like really filled my heart so um i'm really really um grateful for you guys and this family keep growing i still cannot believe that we are almost at 100 patreons already you know like i was like so not expecting that <laughs> and uh now that, that that i see the love you know i'm like whoa I'm, I'm so happy that i'm able to be here for you guys and you are able to be here for me all right guys so um as usual, as always, you know, what I'm going to be doing here, it's a little bit of like a daily Bravo Chella. And there is so many things that we have to discuss, okay? So today we're going to be talking about Vanderpump Rules, Real Housewife of Orange County, Real Housewife of New Jersey, um, a little like mix there between Summer House and Vanderpump Rules. You know, there is definitely a little bit of everything. So bring your tea, bring your coffee, a little blanket if you want to, like relax and let's talk about this oh mess okay bitch so uh now that you're ready let's just get into it i mean let's see what is going on over here i have some like um notes over here so let's start let's start talking 
a little bit about uh, Vanderpump Rules, you know? Um, I give you a lot of tea on my last video of what is going on. You know, we talk a little bit about shorts. We talk about, a little, you know, about everything. And I don't know if you caught this, but apparently there are real truth to these rumors that Miss Raquel Rachel will actually be doing some kind of exclusive interview. We don't know with whom, we don't know how, but apparently she's preparing to do some kind of interview uh, after she finished her program, right? Her wellness program, and that she's going to be spilling all the real tea, that she is tired of lying for Tom Sandoval, of being, you know, manipulated or gaslighted or whatever, you know, and that she will be, you know, exposing all the truth about what really went down and the exact timeline. I don't know what is like stopping her, to be honest. Um, I don't think at this point anyone could have a low, a lower, you know, as expectation uh, from her. So this is the thing. <clears throat> to me, even if she comes, you know, if, even if she says that the the um, affair was longer and it was even from when she was with James Kennedy, I wouldn't think better of her or worse of her you know at this point i'm like just put the truth out there actually i think in putting the truth no matter how ugly it is kind of like will at least give her one little point of respect you know because sandoval is out there doing his best life doing like everything girl actually like on a side note the other day i realized that uh i went to my stories right and for some reason tom sandoval watched all of my stories from his account and the tom and the most extras account I found that so weird because he watched stories that didn't even have anything to do with Vanderpool Rules. And I was like, and it's the first time, you know, I, I'm, I'm constantly looking who is watching on my stories. And it's the first time that Tom Sandoval is actually watching my stories. So I'm like, girl, if he watching me, like, girl, I mean, if you're looking for support, I don't think you're going to be getting it from here. Although I have to tell you guys, if... I think if he will reach out and say, hey, do you want to interview me? I will say yes, you know, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be, no, I will be like, I will interview, interview you, but you are not going to tell me what can I ask or what can I ask you, okay? And I will be very much into like, we are going to take some accountability right now, you know, we are going to tell the world, why are you so dumb, you know? Um... So yeah, I don't think he uh, we will ever agree to that. I mean, if he will be, um, you know, a real man, you know, and like uh, has actually some courage, he will accept something like that and not like a Randall, like how we, well, not a Randall, but like someone like Howie Mandel who will just ask whatever he wanted to be asked, right? But anyways, I thought that was funny. I thought that was funny that he will actually watch my stories out of nowhere. I mean, I remember, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I wasn't even talking about Vanderpump Rules. It was like so weird. But anyways, yeah, so let's, uh, why, 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 why we're talking? I think Raquel. Okay, yeah, so I think at this point, Sandoval keeps being out there, trying to, you know, spill the truth, spill the narrative, trying to put, you know, his own um, twist on everything. And Raquel is not making herself any favors by just being completely quiet. I feel that she definitely should be saying anything. Is it going to be truth? Is it going to be fake? Who knows, you know, but at least she will be saying something. I don't think she could find any um, reasoning to do what she did, but at least by keeping exposing how manipulative Tom Sandoval was, maybe it will give her some point, you know? Now, let's talk about moving forward. So Vanderpump Rules, actually, uh, they already sent all of the contracts and they are set to start filming at the end of June, right? 
uh, which is like in a couple of weeks. Uh, apparently, everyone received a contract, right? And now we're hearing that Charlie, Charlie Burnett, she actually received a contract to become a full-time cast member next season. And get this, she doesn't know if she wants to do it. And I'm thinking like, girl, we need Charlie because Charlie, she is an accountability queen. She doesn't give a shit about anyone, you know. She's not afraid of, of Katie or Lala or Sheena or Ariana or Tom or Jax or no one, right? And she could put just her opinion right there. I think we need Charlie, but I mean, she is the one who is not sure. She said, okay. So on, on a little interview that she did, she actually said some things that I really make me think. She said that one of the reasons why she doesn't know if she wants to come back is because if she returns, she knows that she's going to have to end up having to film some scenes with Rachel and that that will be very uncomfortable. She also said that she might have to film, she doesn't know how to navigate uh, filming group scenes where like everyone is going to be invited, including Sandoval, Schwartz, and Rachel. Does this mean that they will actually be returning to the show? And but you know what? I'm just thinking like, girl, just just do it. Also, she actually kind of confirmed. So we have been hearing these rumors that they are talking to several cast members from the past to do some kind of return to the show. Okay, and now we, we saw Kristen Doty. She got an amazing, you know, approval of everyone to return. Uh, there is a lot of talk that Jack Taylor and Brittany Cartwright might be returning to the show. And I'm thinking, girl. Uh, so Charlie also said, because remember the last time that Charlie saw Jax, like she checked him. <clears throat> that she is a little bit nervous of having to confront these uh, people from the old cast that might be returning to the show. Charlie, I'm telling you, you are loved, you are support, you know, and if she decided to return, now she has a fandom to stand on, okay? Because even though, for example, last season that they didn't give her a full-time role, every single time that Charlie appeared on the show, she was applauded by everyone. You know, so we are now, I mean, there is, a, there has been a, a really long way from the pasta girl that we all hated to the Charlie that it is there now, you know? So I think that girl, put on your big, big girl pants, come here, film, you are needed. All right. Okay. So let's see what else is going on over here. Well, talking about, um, Talking about Tom Sandoval, you know, spinning the truth. Apparently, he decided to call the paparazzi on him again, you know. You know, that randomly he's walking, you know, doing some kind of, like, thing. And, and oh, TMC just happened to be there, you know. And um, he just says something. I think he's doing some damage control, okay. Schwartz came on Stars on, on Mars, and he was very clear into what he said. You know, he said, I'm taking a break from my friendship, from my friend, from Scandoval, from everything. Like, I do not want to be involved in this anymore. He's really rethinking his friendship with Tom Sandoval at this point, you know. And um, not that they're going to stop being friends. I don't believe that they're ever going to stop being friends. But it is okay to rethink what is your position on this friendship. What are you getting from this friendship? And if you have to put some boundaries, you know, then... <clears throat> do it now because clearly what you have been doing for the past like 20 years has not been working because you were took advantage of wait latina moment guys you were you were you were shit i don't know how to say that well you know what i mean you know tom sandoval took advantage of tom schwartz you know and literally abandoned him in the middle of the biggest moment of his life he is opening a new restaurant. He is uh, in the middle of getting divorced. Uh, I think uh, he was having family problems, something with her dad. Um, I think one of, of, of her brothers was like battling some kind of like a testicular cancer or something. Like there was a lot going on on Schwartz's family that he did not disclose. 
okay? So that's why we need to understand that like this whole thing, this whole show that we're seeing on this season was going through a lot, okay? So anyways, um, Schwartz said that, you know, I'm done. And, you know, the reports are that they, he has not really been talking too much to Sandoval because he's taking a break from the friendship. Well, Sandoval told to TMC that that was not true, you know? Again, he's trying to, you know, find a way to bring Schwartz back because, you know, he knows that he if he gets Schwartz on a leash, he's going to be able to control him again. So now Sandoval is putting the, the narrative out there, right? And he's saying like, oh, no, uh, that was, you know, that was not what he said. That was already like being uh, proved to be fake or something like that. You know, he says that that what Schwartz says is that he was taking a break from Scandoval, not Sandoval. <laughs> Bitch, you are a scandal, okay? You are the reason why he is where he is. So, yes, he is taking a break from you. Let him be, okay? You put him on this mess. Sandoval is the reason why Schwartz went to the lowest of the lowest point of his life. You know, this is supposed to be your brother, your, your, your soulmate, you know, and you did this to him. So if he's taking a break from you, let him have it. Do not go to TMC trying to save his own neck again, saying like, oh no, actually he loved me. No, he doesn't love you right now, okay? And it is okay for him to dislike you a little bit because what you did was a horrible, 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 disgusting thing. Also, he doubled down on the, you know, t-shirt comment. Um, there was a part that I didn't quite understand because the TMC guys tell him that people are saying that he was body shaming Ariana with the t-shirt comment. Um, I didn't get that because I don't understand how was he body shaming her. I mean, I took it more for, from the side of like being a cynic asshole, you know, and being like, oh, we finally have sex. You know, he was wearing my shirt, you know, and in the worst moment of the reunion. But I didn't get the whole, you know, um, body shaming thing. But he says that he was not body shaming her, that Rihanna is a beautiful woman, that uh, it was just in the heat of the moment. And kind of like, you know, the thing with Sandoval, and I, I, I finally am seeing this after so many years. He's not able to say sorry, you know, or to say that he was wrong. You know, it's just like, it's always like, I'm, I'm sorry, but, you know, or, you know, uh, yeah, I might have been wrong, but this is what I mean. You know, it's not that, like, just stop. Just be apologetic, you know, and be sorry, you know. We, yes, there is reasons for everything in this world, but an apology should not have a reasoning behind because otherwise it really means that you are not sorry for whatever the fuck you, you are putting out there. Girl. So I thought that that was a little bit, you know, weird. And why call TMC? There, I mean... More than the arena, I think to me is the Schwartz thing, you know? It's like, please just leave him alone. It's so clear the Schwartz, it's kind of like a pylon of things, you know? He has he had problems with his father, with his brother, with his divorce, with his with with the restaurant that you abandoned him to go and, and try and play wannabe pop star, you know. Uh, and 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 now you, you make it like even worse. And instead of like set him free, he wants to keep controlling him. He wants the world to know like, oh no, no. Oh, oh Schwartz thinks that he can be free by going by a reality show by himself? No, bitch, I control him. You know, that, that's the thing that he's trying to put out there. And it really made me so mad and upset. Like Tom Sandoval became honestly a horrible human being i was never expecting i mean i was never like a 100 percent fan of tom sandoval or i was like whatever you know he's there but like watching him really becoming this thing you know that is so ugly and 
and and and so like I don't give a fuck about it. It just it's so bad, so bad, you know. So I'm just like leave Schwartzy alone. He is so much better without you. Now, Greg, the partner of of Schwartz and Sandys, this guy is hating Tom Sandoval. Okay, there are rumors that they have been trying to buy out Tom Sandoval from the restaurant, you know, the, the partners and everyone. They're like, you know, we can work with Schwartz, but we don't want to work with Sandoval anymore. Like, we are done with his ass. Of course, I don't think that Sandoval is going to, like, you know, accept out of pride. And I will be like, bitch, just leave, you know, leave. You, you did this thing so wrong. Um, Greg, the partner, actually went on a live the other day of someone else, someone that, that was a short and Sandys, to actually say, say, like, this is insane. This is like Lisa Vanderpump talking bad about someone. Like, Greg literally came out and said that he was discussed by Tom Sandoval, that he couldn't believe that what he's done and that, that, that the restaurant took a huge hit and that he was 100% team Ariana because she respected Ariana so much because she was more present during the construction of Schwartz and Sandys than Tom Sandoval. And that she will always be welcome, and that she that that she love her, and he, I mean he praised her and praised her. Like imagine your partner of your restaurant who has your name on it being like, oh no, he is a piece of shit, girl. I mean, anyways, um, talking a little bit of a mix, you know, here. Paige the Sorvo from Summer House, guys. This was like super random and very like out of nowhere. But Paige the Sorvo literally went on, and she's doing some like live shows on something like that. I don't know. Let me see if I have it over here. Um, she was um, yeah, she was doing this live, you know. I think she's with Hannah. And it's like, ask us any, 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 anything, you know. And apparently, she disclosed this information that Raquel Rachel actually tried to, you know, do something with none other than Craig Conover. Yes. And you know that Paige and Craig, they have been dating for a very long time you know, long distance or wherever, but they're dating. And apparently, according to Paige the Sorvo, they were all together and Raquel tried to do several moves on Craig uh, until Paige was like, back the fuck up, you know? I don't know. I mean, this was like a long time ago, so maybe this was during the whole time of like Raquel is trying to like basically wreck every single home in America, you know? <laughs> I mean, I just found it so, so funny because it's like, like there is no limit for Raquel. Like literally the limit, the, the limit does not exist when it comes to Raquel and married man. You know, I mean, I, I, I honestly feel that she get off. You know, she must be like, oh, my God, are you, how long have you been married? Oh, my God, yes. Do you have kids? You know, like, she's, like, obsessed with, like, being with these guys who are on a relationship. I think that's her, you know, her, her, I want to say, like, her fantasy, like, your, I mean, I don't know, a girl. Anyway, so that's, that's what Paige is saying. I don't think that, well... Do you guys think that Craig will like do something with um with uh Raquel? It's just like I feel it also all comes part of the thirstiness, you know. Um you know that Raquel actually dated Nima Van from uh Shots of Sunset, right? And Nima was actually on Shenanigans the other day. Girl, this guy spills so much tea on Raquel, you know. And because they were dating at the same time that she was already with Sandoval. Like, it's a whole, like, the whole thing is just insane, you know? 
and uh, Nima says how much he was like, like, yeah, we went on like some dates, you know, but I never really like feel the vibe, you know, and she was kind of like very insisting, you know, into like going out. Like the whole thing really screamed that Raquel was so thirsty to find someone, you know, I mean, look, before the, I honestly think that the affair was created by Raquel trying to position herself into this show. We all know that she went out and, you know, had this whole relationship with James Kennedy because she wanted to get on the show. You know, the, literally the moment that her name was on the credits, she was like, mm, I don't need you anymore. Bye. <laughs> and then she's like, OK, now I have these girlfriends. Now I need to do something like very chaotic to keep being relevant on this show. And I think that's why she, she was trying to like really date everyone because crossovers like crossover dating, you know, it's becoming a real thing in Bravo. And a lot of people, you know, are dating other people from other franchises and other, you know, shows and like keeping like on the Bravo family, you know. So I'm thinking like she really, really try everything and everyone. So like I 100% believe Paige saying that she tried to do some moves on Craig um, back in the day because that is something that Raquel will 100% do. Now... I don't think that Craig will do it, you know, has, I mean, for my fans of Southern Charm out there, I don't remember Craig being like a cheater, right? The thing I honest, no, I actually don't know. No, I don't think he has ever like cheat with anyone. I know Austin has cheated and, and Shep has cheated, you know, but like, I think Craig is the one guy who actually hasn't cheated on anyone. And I think he actually really, really loves Paige. Actually, I think Paige is the one that is the one who is like, mm, I don't know, like the whole like, like, I don't want to move, you know, I don't just I just want to be like sleeping on my bed all day. I don't know. So anyways, yeah, that's that's that happened. OK, Raquel tried to get herself a little, you know, Southern gentleman. And it did not work out. She tried to get her some, you know, Persian love. It didn't work out. So she decided to go and jump into, you know, another married dick because that's what she likes. Anyways, girl. Okay. So it is time to move on into another franchises. But before we do that, it is time to, you know, have some words from or partners for this video so stay tuned and we're gonna continue after this quick um, ads it's time to give a shout out to our partners of this video and are the beautiful people of Rose forever they did this amazing bouquet of flowers with special oils that will make the roses last up to a year this is the perfect gift for you, your mom, your wife, your husband, whatever you want to say, I'm sorry, I love you, I miss you, say it with these beautiful flowers. So if you want to get your bouquet right now, go to the link on the description below and use my discount code ANDY25 and you will get $25 off your order. Again, this is the perfect gift for anyone. So whatever you want to say, say it with roses from Rose Forever. It's time to give a shout out to our partners of this video and are the people of Liquid IV. Liquid IV, it's all about hydration. So if you are into working out, walking, running, jogging, hiking, whatever you are doing that you are losing water and electrolytes, this is for you. Liquid IV will hydrate you twice as fast as water. Super convenient little packs that you can take anywhere. They have all these amazing flavors, green apple, wild berry, lemon, lime. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. So if you want to get your liquid IV, make sure to go to the link on the description of this video and use my discount code SHADEMANEMPIRE and you will get 20% off plus 
free shipping. So what are you waiting for? Go and get your liquid IV right now. It's time to give a shout out to our partners of this video and are the beautiful people of Jibu Beauty. They have an amazing skincare collection that will make your skin and your soul look amazing. Their personal mission in life is to make your skin glow. From the Super Duo to the Multitasking Tint Moisturizer to even their new Enchanted Bloom collection, everything that they offer is just perfection. So if you want to get your products, make sure to go to the link on the description below and do not forget to use my discount code ANDY15 and you will get between 15 and 20% off. So get your products right now. Jibu Beauty, inspired by dreams, made for reality. All right, guys, welcome back. Those are like, you know, a big shout out to our partners, Rose Forever, Liquid IV, Beauty Jewelry. And also, guys, remember, if you want to get a personalized message from me, now you can request it through Cameo. Okay, the link is on the description below. And it's also like a really fun thing to do. I'm, I have done some amazing, amazing cameos. So there are all kind of ways to support my channel and I still also have my merch. All right, guys, so let's continue. Let's continue with this, you know, ball. And um, let's talk now about the mess that is Real Housewives. So let's start with Real Housewife of Atlanta, girl. Look. I'm gonna say it, I I love Real Housewives, okay? I love all of my Real Housewives. I mean, I will say 90% of them, I really, really love them. And when it comes to Atlanta, I have really created a special bond with them, you know? They make me laugh, they are amazing, the drama is on point, you know? Uh, so it's very hard for me to like really criticize this season because I do not feel that it is as bad as people, as some people are trying to put it out there. But who am I to say it? Because the numbers have to speak for themselves. Guys, apparently the ratings for The Real Housewife on Atlanta are going down, 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 down. And I'm thinking like, what, what do you think we really need to like be watching what what are you expecting from atlanta because the ratings are even lower guys lower than the ratings from the real houses of new york when it got canceled uh-huh and it's not going up but i'm thinking look there there is drama you know there is drama between kenya and marlo there is drama between uh candy and this new girl corny there is drama between Drew and Marlo. There is drama between Sharae and um, Candy, I think. So, you know, there are things that are going on. Yes, it is not super explosive drama, but there are things that are going on. Or do you think that people are just getting tired of this cast? Do you think that it is time to do a full-on reboot on Atlanta? Guys, do not say we need to bring Nene Leaks back because that is not going to happen. Okay, it's just not gonna happen. Nini Leaks burn every single bridge in the world, you know, and that's just not gonna happen, you know. So, what do you think? What do you need if you're a fan of the Real Housewife of Atlanta? What do you need in order to get you to the couch and watch the episodes of Atlanta? Um, I don't know. You know, the, do, do we need more luxury lifestyle? Do we need all, all, all a different kind of drama? Maybe people are tired of like Marlo versus Kenya. I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's very hard for me, like I said, because I really like these women. All of them. I actually like all of them. Maybe Corny because she's new. I haven't really connected with her. But I actually really like this cast. And I'm thinking like, Why? I don't, I don't understand. I'm trying to understand. So let me know in the comments, guys, if you are not liking Atlanta, 
why are you not liking it and why what would you change moving forward you know but if the numbers keep going at this rate i have to tell you i will i will really think that atlanta is going to be the next franchise to be fully reboot so yeah that is going on anyways um Guys, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Real Housewife of Orange County. We do have some tea going on. Pfft, I'm uh, loving, uh, loving this season. Okay, Tamara Judge being back. Mm -mm -mm. Girl, I'm so excited because actually, I don't know if you know this, but like Shannon Bedore, Vicky Gumbelson, and Tamara Judge are doing a live event. You know, they're going on tour and they're doing a live event. <clears throat> sorry guys and um i actually got tickets to go to their show here in irvine california i'm so excited they're gonna be doing skits and singing and dancing and being silly and whooping it up like i can know i love i love the tres amigas i mean orange county you know that even though Beverly hills is my favorite franchise orange county was the first franchise that i started watching you know, from the very beginning. So, ah, oh, I love these girls. You know, I love a fun time. Um, I'm so glad that Tamara Judge is back. You know, there is a lot of real, real drama that we're going to start getting into the show, but also so many, like, fun moments. And uh, I, I don't know if I'm by myself in this island, but, like, I don't want everything to be drama all the time. Guys, do we want, like, everything to be, like, Real Housewife of New Jersey? Like, why does everything needs to be a screaming, 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 drama, drama, drama? Yes. I do think that there should be some kind of drama revolving each, you know, season. But we need fun. We need a luxury. We need people getting drunk. I don't know. That's the thing that I... I, I really love, you know, and I think they, they're doing such an amazing job. Everyone is really having a lot of fun. Now, Miss Shannon Bedore actually went on an interview with Ry Sanders, you know, and she spilled some tea about the return of Tamara Judge, you know. She said that actually the person who had the hardest time re-embracing Tamara Judge was actually herself because of the history that they had, you know, and they have to like really go through a whole process in order to get back that friendship, right? But she said that everyone in the cast is afraid of being on the bad side of Tamara Judge. They know that Tamara Judge is royalty. You know, they know that Tamara Judge knows how to create reality TV. She's not afraid of calling you out in public. She's not afraid of being real. She's not afraid to really giving us what we need, you know, on TV. So if any girl is trying to be fake, you know, or trying to be perfect for the cameras, you know that Tamara Judge is not going to play with that, you know. So she said that everyone is, like, very afraid to be on the bad side of Tamara. Uh, and she said she's, it's not a fun side to be. And she said, like, I, wa I, I was there and it's not a fun place to be but you know compromise who you are in order to just like walking on eggshells around you don't have to walk on eggshells around Tamara if you are real you know I think the thing that the thing that Tamara Judge really does is that call out the fakeness right being like like that's not true that's not true that's not true so if you are trying to be a different persona it's definitely going to be showing up on the show she said, uh, Shannon Bedore said that Heather Dubrow had a very hard time during this season, uh, especially because things that she said off camera. Guess what? Guess what? I don't know who invented going to Aspen, but apparently everything that happened on Aspen is off camera and it creates big drama. And we're going to be getting the same here in Orange County. Apparently, Shannon Bedore had a conversation with Heather Dubrow. And Heather told her something around that area, you know, of like being afraid of Tamara or something like that. Because Shannon confronted her and told her that her friendship with uh, Heather's friendship with Tamara Judge does not make any sense. 
you know, like they are not on the same place that they were before. And that, that it was kind of like a friendship of convenience, right? And apparently Heather did say like, like I'm just like faking to be friends with her because I, I, I'm, I'm afraid of her and I don't want to be on her bad side. Now, apparently Shannon is gonna, of course, bring bringing that comment into the camera and Heather is going to be the nine, the nine, the nine. And apparently someone else hear the same conversation or had a similar conversation with Heather and is going to be saying like, oh no, you did say that. You did say that. And just because it was off camera doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Girl, I'm telling you, these girls from Orange County, they know how to play, you know? They know how to play this game. And Tamara Judge is the number one person right there. I cannot wait for um, Vicky Gumbelson to be back and to, like, see the three of them. I've, I'm very positive that at some point we're going to be seeing Vicky Gumbelson back on the show as an orange holder. I don't know. It's something that I'm feeling because Vicky has never let really go Orange County you know, and I think it's really needed. But also, I want to see Miss Taylor Armstrong holding her own orange as well. All right, guys. So, let's move on. We're almost over. Let me see. All right, let's move on a little bit into Real Housewife of New Jersey, of course. We need to talk about it because the third part of the reunion, girl, Peacock has the extended uncensored version of the Real Housewives of New Jersey. It was insane. I'm not going to get into the details because, you know, I'm, I am I love Teresa. I think that she's right. I, you know, it is what it is, you know, so I'm not going to bore you with the same thing, you know, I'm to have like some uh, Melissa haters out there being like, you're only the, the, like uh, defend Teresa. Yes, I defend Teresa because she's right. Okay. She's right. And the way that Margaret Josephs was literally like like you know trembling shaking physically shaking when where louis was being like uh, not even to the thought of louis investigating her just to the thought because we have here louis be basically saying like i did not investigate you i did not pay anyone to investigate you you know and she's like yeah you did yeah you did you know and she bring this like weak ass <laughs> receive you call my kid okay you know like the, the whole thing was just so bad you know and this side of the couch they were so afraid of the like if you have nothing to hide you will be like oh, investigate me bring me what you find you know do it go for it but all of them from uh Fuda to margaret to of course the gorgas Girl, these people were dying, dying. They were like, oh, my God, what are they going to say? What are they going to say? Oh, my God, no, 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 no. It was so funny. It was so funny. But anyways, um, let's go through a couple of things over here. First of all, when Joe Gorga tries, tries to bring Frank's Jr. Uh, thing with, Lo with Louis, and Dolores is like, I'm gonna shut this down now because there is no problem between Frank Jr. and Luis Rellas, okay? And she is like, no, I am not gonna play this game. You are not gonna drag my kid into this. And I love when, he, when she said like, you and I have never had a problem. We are not gonna start having one. So shut the fuck up. Well, she didn't say shut the fuck up, but I wish she could say shut the fuck up, you know? And shame of Frank Sr. for trying to, like, do something about this. And now we have actually confirmation from Frank Jr. himself. First of all, Frank Jr. on his social media is still following Luis Relas. Do you want to know who he is not following? Joe Gorga. Mm -hmm. Because he lies, lies, lies. And then um, we have Frank um responding to someone you know saying like hey is there in is there any truth to these allegations that you that louis you know left you hanging you know and never respond or anything and uh frank said frank jr said absolutely not 
the job was great i learned a bunch and ended up going to a bigger firm it was an awesome experience okay so she's also shutting that down how they try to take anything to make it worse of what actually is i just i can't um now both Dito. The Bo Diddle of everything. So Bo Diddle, the private investigator that allegedly, you know, Louis hired to investigate everyone. This guy came forward. And this guy is not playing around, guys. His voice, I was shaking. I was like, oh, shit, I am not going to, I am not going to be like, like messing with this man, you know? Okay, so this guy came forward <coughs> himself and he said that Louis never hired him to investigate any person from the cast of The Real Housewife of New Jersey and that he wanted to leave that very clear, okay? But apparently at the same time, he says he throw a warning to Joe Gorga. Girl, he says that I already said that I did not investigate you, you know, and because Joe Gorga keeps going around saying that he did, that he did, that he did, that he did, you know, uh, um, what is his name? Bo Diddle said like, <laughs> I, I try to remember the words, but it was something like to that little like minion, uh, little husband, something like it was something like bad, you know, uh, I have to tell I, I have something for you. I did not investigate you and I already told you this and I already told everyone this. But if you want to keep lying, if you want to keep lying, I will investigate you and I will investigate you for free, girl. I just imagine Joe Gorga right now being like under a table, you know, shaking so much because we all know how much shit Joe Gorga has on his past. And now imagine also Melissa Gorga. Like, <laughs> these people must be dying. Both, you know, and the voice, it's literally like Godfather vibes, you know? So I was like, ooh, do not play with this man. Now, Andy Cohen literally said that he received a text message from Bo Diddle himself. How did he got Andy Cohen's number? I have no idea, but like, girl. And he says that um, the final part of Diddle's message particularly piqued Cohen interest. It says, so he is saying that Louis didn't hire him to investigate the cast of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. So that's a very specific thing he's saying. He is not saying he doesn't have information. Um, after the famed private investigator, blah, blah, blah. So Bo Diddle texts me again and says, I just want to say on his behalf. He said, I never investigate any of the cast of the housewife of New Jersey. I never said that I didn't do any investigations for Louis. So as we know, Bo Diddle is a very close friend of Louis Rellas, okay? So probably Louis has hired him to do other kind of investigations, but he is literally coming here saying, I did not investigate um, any person from this cast. But the, how, what Andy just said, that the, never, he never said that he doesn't have information on these people. These people better be shaking. No, not even shaking. You know, just what? Just leave it alone. Because we all know that Miss Margaret and Melissa and Joe B and Joe Gorga have so much shit on her on their past and they're probably under present as well that they don't want this little information going on out there you know and oh girl i mean margaret literally being so obnoxious and being so like oh i cannot believe that you will hire a private investigator like bitch are you doing the same thing 
didn't you literally just have like a whole thing with a a a, a, a blog not a blogger but like an instagram a bravo account where you went on and buy you know a pizza oven so you could bring it to the reunion to keep you know talking about shit that it doesn't even relate to you on any shape or form right isn't she the one going around talking to louis excess you know and putting a bunch of shit out there isn't she the one digging information on bill aiding you know and on absolutely everyone girl isn't she the one who allegedly put out there the jackie goldschneider rumor the bill Aiden rumor and the melissa gorga rumor? like what is wrong with this people? i still don't understand how there are some fans that don't see how Margaret Josephs is the problem and she is behind of everything. Now, one thing that I do have to say is it really breaks my heart that Teresa and Joe are not, are not being able to resolve this issue, you know? For the way that they talk each other at the reunion... You can tell that, they, that there is love there. And you can also tell how Melissa Gorga is the freaking problem in all of this. You know, and it really breaks my heart that you know, they, they, they just want to be there for each other and they just can't. Joe Gorga is so blindsided. Not blindsided, but blind. How do you say that word? Oh, yeah, blindsided, right? Anyways, you know, Latino moment. Uh, from uh, Melissa Gorga that is just too much. You know, and the whole thing, it could be resolved so quickly. I don't know, maybe time will tell. Maybe they do need some time, you know. Um, Real House of New Jersey just got one of the biggest, you know, ratings. And there are people saying, like, no one is going anywhere. But there is a lot of rumors saying that it's going to be over for someone. And I don't think it's going to be Teresa, to be very honest with you. So anyways, that's it. That's what is happening. And that's pretty much everything I have to say today, right? So thank you very much for being here for another episode of Let's Talk About This Mess with The Real Andy of Beret Hills. I love you guys. Love all of your support. I keep seeing every single thing that you do. I'm still posting some shorts and some little like things on my YouTube channel, okay? So make sure to still, you know, go and watch those. Don't worry. I, like I said before, I am not abandoning my YouTube channel because that community also means the world to me, you know? So I'm going to be posting little shorts over there. I'm still posting on TikTok. I'm still posting on Instagram. Don't forget to follow me everywhere. The Real Andy BH everywhere. Real Andy BH. And um, that's it. Thank you. I'll see you around tomorrow for another episode. Bye, bye. Oh, also, uh, before I left, actually, guys, if you went all the way here, I'm probably going to be dropping episodes around 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, you know, every day. That's going to be around that time, either 4 or 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's the kind of um, hour that I'm going to be dropping videos. So you can, like program yourself or stay tuned or if you want to watch it next day in the morning you can also like listen the next day all right guys so thank you for being here i love you and i'll see you around see ya bye